Well, a gale has just blown through the UK renewables industry in the form of Octopus Energy and their announcement that they'll accept solar installations onto their smart export guarantee tariffs without the need for MCS accreditation. This is a huge development for electricians and homeowners because it means you can sell that excess energy back to the grid at a very competitive rate. But where else could we come to find out about this? We're in Wensleydale in the heart of the Yorkshire Dales, home of GTEC training, and we're gonna meet up with Griff Thomas, one of Britain's leading renewables experts to find out what this means. But Griff, I guess we could start by what is the MCS scheme and how does it apply to solar? Okay, so MCS scheme was originally set up by the government in around about 2006 or seven. It was originally only run by BRE or the Building Research Establishment. And it was there to underpin some of the very early government grants and, and funding. Um, it then moved to sort of more independent uh, coverage by third party certification schemes. So the likes of NAPIT and NIC and APHC and other organisations that could then certify contractors for different technologies, solar PV being one of them, and being able to then offer some third party assurance against the MCS standards. And the government saw that as a sort of underpinning quality requirement for a lot of their incentive schemes over the years. So that's things like the renewable heat incentive, the FIT legislation, and of course, until recently, uh, the smart export guarantee as well. Okay, so if I was someone who was having a renewable technology installed and the government was somehow gonna give me some cash back through incentives, they would insist that that installation was done by a contractor who had trained with the MCS standard. That's right, yeah. Trained and had a certification visit by a certification body. Um, there is a, an or equivalence allowance, but there's never been the equivalence that's been defined. So it has always been MCS. Okay, so we'll roll the clock forward now and Octopus Energy have announced that they will accept solar installations that haven't been through an MCS process installed by any contractor out there. That's right. And in my sort of 20-ish years of being in and around the industry and the legislation, this is one of the biggest shifts that I've seen in terms of opening up the market to the, the mass market of really good electrical contractors who can go out there and do a great job, but without wanting to have to have engaged in going through the MCS process. I can see two sides of this argument. So there's people who say, yes, it opens it up to all the contractors out there. And there's lots of electricians now want to retrain and get on board with solar because obviously the market's booming and it's becoming part of their, should we say, their daily life, isn't it? It's a, Absolutely. A, a, lots of houses will have solar. Yeah. But then the flip side is, it does it somehow diminish the quality of the fact you haven't got MCS looking down and regulating the installations? And, and that's a real double-edged sword, but in fairness, we've had that with all sorts of things as the electrical world's evolved from, you know, 30, 36 fuses right the way through to um, AFDDs now and surge protective devices. And, and, and it, none of that is really heavily regulated in the way that the contractors involved in renewables have been. So there's one argument that says it's now just mainstream. And as you say, contractors might do a job a month for an average customer that they've had for the last 10 years. And this now allows them to do that without having to spend the money and take the time off work of becoming certified. Okay, and it's quite an expensive process as well, isn't it? The MCS, it's another it, sort of license to practice you have to pay for. It certainly can be. So, you know, a certification body cost might be somewhere from 600 to 800, even a thousand pounds for that. that. That's a lot of money in the first place. There's quite a lot of preparation time that's needed to, to get ready for that um, annual inspection. And until recently, it might change in, in later part of this year, but there's also been a requirement to have other bonds and guarantees, etc., which are again, all really building and building up on top of the contractor and things that they just don't have for their ordinary day-to-day -day work. Mm. Now, I guess going on from that, it, it's, 
it, will this be just come part of you know a contract? They'll argue that they pay NIC or NAEP to be approved contractors. This keeping up the standards of the solar installation does that now fall back to NIC and NAEP? Well, that's really interesting because it for solar PV especially it has done for probably sixteen years now, fifteen years um, since it was introduced into the wiring regulations. We know the wiring regulations covers AC and DC. There's been a section 712 for solar PV for a long time. So if I'm a contractor doing electrical work on solar PV installations, I'm already covered by my inspections that I have for my certification body. So the quality should still be the same. Yeah, and that's, well, yeah. And, but again, we've had seen people out there, you see on social media, people saying, you'll see pictures, possibly some jobs that not quite as good as they could have been, and this was done by an MCS installer. So is that the market? Was, was MCS really working for the mass scale? So I think as we start to scale up, what we've seen is a lot of larger companies doing an awful lot of work um, in terms of numbers of jobs and sites completed. Like anything, scaling up at that kind of rate is really, really difficult. And absolutely, quality can get less and less if it's not really tightly controlled. The current framework under MCS means that typically most contractors will only have a visit once a year. But from the 1st of January 2023 to the 1st of January 2024, I might have hit that solar boom and now I might be doing a thousand jobs more a year than I was doing when I first started. Mm. Uh, and that then becomes a problem. I think that's where we see most of the, the issues and the faults. But equally, we can see that with ordinary electrical work as well. And the reality is I don't actually think anymore that this requires any additional certification or audits or assessments over and above what the contractor is going through in their routine day-to-day -day work. Yeah, so solar is now just part of daily business absolutely and it's now in apprenticeship standards as well for obviously the, the, people, the domestic uh, installer apprenticeship is now includes Quite the renewables right. element it, it, it's part of the curriculum yeah and it's it's probably you know in terms of its um the ability of the contractor to do the work it's probably no more complicated or or any different to them starting to do structured cabling in people's homes for data wiring in smart homes yes you've got to have the training and the knowledge to do it but is there a requirement for an additional level of regulation and obviously in this instance octopus have done the maths and decided that that uh, to not have mcs is now an acceptable thing yeah now that i mean for me that's quite a smart move on behalf of octopus because they've sort of broken away from what others are doing in the market and they've all sort of incentivized all those electricians out there who haven't got MCS or, or couldn't get MCS because of because of uh, problems in, in terms of time scales getting approved. They've sort of almost created a sales force for people as, yeah, we'll fit solar, but if you want to export it, you'll have to go with Octopus. Yeah, absolutely. And that has been one of the biggest problems and I suspect has probably been a trigger for Octopus. And honestly, I think all other providers will go down this route as well. They're all really keen to build themselves virtual power plants. Um, so that's lots and lots of small scale embedded generation and storage all the way across the country. That allows them to, to be able to balance the grid better and to pay us as consumers for our electricity that's being generated at a cheaper price than, than they would have to pay on the wholesale market. And they've done the maths and that works out. Yes, there's been a huge delay in getting people engaged on to, to, to MCS. Um, some people are quoting six to nine months for a visit and completion of certification. And if I'm sat there as an energy company going, I know there's loads of installations that can go in. Uh, I'm going to look at what the risks are of perhaps opening up that a bit further so I can make the most of the market and they've gone away, they've done the sums and decided that non-MCS is now acceptable. Yeah, so they want as many contractors out there as possible installing it and want to grab as much energy as being generated onto their network. Uh, absolutely, and, and others will follow for sure. Um, we see a lot of contractors coming through us for training and one of the questions is, well, what do we do now? And until now, we've had to say, okay, 
potentially if you want to offer your customers the smart export guarantee the easiest route because there's no really well-defined equivalence is then to go through the mcs process but a lot of them don't have the time they don't have the resource to do that um, so a lot of them either drop it or they don't offer their customers the smart export guarantee whereas this is an absolute game changer because now they can be benefiting from up to around about 16 pence on export um, which can make a huge financial difference for somebody looking to optimize their solar returns. Mm. And now, I mean, obviously, there's probably a lot of end users sort of tune into this video because obviously they've heard about MCS and they've had, obviously, people get flooded. I, I, as soon as I touch a, a, a video on uh, YouTube at the moment, I get offers for solar panel installation. Without MCS there, how can there be, what would you, your advice be to an end user on selecting an electrician to do their solar panel installation? So, of course, the first thing with any purchase is get three quotes or, or, or at least a couple of quotes. Make sure you understand it. There's loads of really great forums and online videos like the ones that uh, eFix have done that will help people to understand a bit more about the technology. Beyond that, whilst clause 5.8 under the, the Octopus export guarantee uh, terms and conditions almost allows for a consumer to self-certify, I certainly wouldn't be advising anybody to go down that route. You should be looking for a contractor who's already a member of a competent person scheme so that means that the Section 712 of the wiring regulations is covered. That covers solar photovoltaic. And somebody who can take care of the notification and the paperwork to the distribution network operator or, or the DNO. That's going to be really important to make sure that you remain compliant and safe as a consumer. Mm. And that's, uh, I guess, that's, a, that's the other issue we're finding uh, from electricians out there, there's a lot of projects that go in that aren't registered in the way they should be. So this change, that doesn't change any of the G98 requirements? No, G98 and or G99 and G100 are all remain the same. Individually, none of those documents have ever mandated that you have to have an MCS certificate to complete that notification. We know that some DNOs like to have that on file as part of the process, but there's nothing in the regulations that say that they have to have that. Mm, but you do have to notify. But you do have to know, absolutely, the DNOs absolutely need to know what's going on on their network to make sure that they can reinforce the grid where necessary and, and none of us end up with a load of horrible harmonics or drops in voltage or increases in voltage that we weren't expecting. MCS did release a position statement about this on the website a few days ago. However, the link seems to have been removed. So we'd like to get your opinion on this announcement from Octopus Energy. Is it part of the natural evolution of renewables as more and more electricians install it as part of their daily work? Or will it lead to a lowering of standards? What does it mean for the future of the MCS standards and the approvals that go with it? put your comments in and any other questions you have on renewables because we'll be catching up with Griff in a few weeks time for some more installs and if you'd like to hear more from Griff on renewables I'd really recommend you check out the rather brilliant live stream he held with us right here.